A new developer's diary for Assassin's Creed Mirage has just been released as part of a trilogy of videos that was announced recently and today we're going to discuss all the news coming out of it, including the new info shared by many Assassin's Creed Mirage developers, the new footage, gameplay and concept art about parkour and Baghdad's design, stealth and especially social stealth and several returning types of assassinations and assassination missions. All that and more, so without further ado, Let's dive into all the new Assassin's Creed Mirage info we can gather from episode 1, titled A Return to the Roots. Right from the start, we can see some new gameplay footage of Mirage with our Basim donning the Initiate of Alamut outfit and seemingly moving in a restricted area, which is highlighted in red through the classic compass at the top of the screen that seems to be taken more or less directly from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. On the compass, we can see our objective, seemingly highlighted in orange, and an exit slash entrance icon on the right, which also appears in a much bigger size on the extreme right of the screen. In this shot, we can also see several NPCs with the crowd density being increased from Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is good enough for social stealth as we'll see later. Basim might have been spotted here, which can be seen by how the NPCs are reacted to him, but also potentially from the red and white exclamation mark on the upper part of the screen. As narrative director Sarah Beaulieu discusses how the team wants to pay homage to the original Assassin's Creed game, we can also see two new concepts showcasing Baghdad, its palaces and mosques. Creative director Stéphane Boudon and art director Jean-Luc Salah introduce us to the basics of the story and the core elements of the experience and how they tried to bring the feel of the old games with the more modern gameplay and here we can see a whiteboard that shows some elements and locations of a portion of the city of Baghdad and how they might be placed in the map including, well, the round city itself, a prince palace, an historian monastery, a so-called gate of the Greeks, plus a canal, a garden, a mosque and four markets. We then jump into the core of the video that is a focus on the main pillars of the game, parkour, stealth and the assassinations. And we start with parkour, highlighted with the two additional new concepts showcasing Basim and Roshan running atop the roofs of Baghdad, showcasing how the city is planned to be dense, allowing players to keep to the roofs as much as possible, which we actually see right after in game on the screen of this developer. And as we can see from the lower hand of the screen, this build seemingly dates back to May 9th of 2023, which is pretty recent so I'd imagine we might actually consider this the current state of development of the game. Senior game designer Marco Maresca introduces us to the ideas at the base of parkour in Mirage that is comfort and fluidity as we see more footage from the May the 9th build which shows that we'll be able to tree run in Mirage as well as we can see more crowds in the lower right of the screen. Ubisoft seems to also be confident enough to show us direct footage of a build of the game with all the overlay and UI of the engine itself. This time the build seems to be from April the 18th and it seems we can also see the settings at which the build is running at the top left of the screen. Apparently, we are seeing Basim during a mission called A Job Well Done, where he has to visit the so-called Abazia Bureau, and considering we know there's going to be a Hidden Ones Bureau for each of the districts in Baghdad, we can surmise Abazia might be one of the remaining names of the districts that we didn't know of. So now we know that Baghdad will be made up of four districts, Abazia, Kark, the Round City and the 4th District whose name we still don't know. Here we can also see two new icons on the compass, a golden one similar to the Books of Knowledge in Valhalla and a white arabesque like one, while in the top right we can see a number which, if this is also similar to Valhalla, might indicate the number of skill points that can be spent in the skills menu. So we get new and old footage to show Basim jumping from beam to beam on Baghdad's roofs until we dive deeper in the already known elements that make up parkour in Mirage. For example, vaulting over small obstacles. Here we can see what seems to be a comparison between ACK, which should be Assassin's Creed Kingdoms, one of the original names of Valhalla, and the new vaulting animation in the prototype on the right. 
Maresca then discusses the elevators, which have been part of the AC games for ages now, and then moves on to discuss the pole vaults by showing new concepts about this parkour ingredient that will allow Basim to cross large gaps without ever touching the ground. More prototype animations to show Basim's speed before we have a look at Roshan's model being animated, while we also see more concepts, one for the CGI trailer of the game and another one where we actually see Basim chasing another hidden one who is dressed sort of similar to Altair. And we also see the name Rift, or better, Assassin's Creed Rift in the lower left, which I'd imagine wasn't supposed to be there. Keeping to the parkour, the attention will seemingly be focused on choosing the right path through the environment, rather than making your own path by knowing how to move within the world through the various button combinations and timings, but at least it does seem like the parkour in Mirage will be much more focused on verticality as well. After dealing with what to me seems like the weaker pillar of Mirage, the Dev Diary moves on to stealth, while also discussing some of the assassination moves already. Among the elements that we can see for the first time in-game are the assassinations from the hiding stations and especially, and I had been hoping so much for this, the bench assassinations which are a direct callback to the original games, though it's not clear if the guard's body will be sit on the bench to avoid catching the attention of other nearby guards, and also the assassination from the rooftop gardens which will also be back as hiding spots as we already mentioned in our past videos. We then see what seems to be an early concept for the game, where Basim is donning what I believe to be an early street thief outfit, which is sort of similar to one of the concepts we had already seen in previous trailers. The detection and vanishing loops have also been improved, as stated by Maresca, which is supposedly going to make the guard's behavior more readable and hopefully non inconsistent as it was in Valhalla at launch. The dev diary also showed some of the enemy archetypes. For example, it allowed us to see in-game how Enkidu, our eagle, can be spotted by archers and be hit, interrupting our connection to him, and while looking at this, we can see a tiny location-based text box dedicated to the wilderness, which seems to actually be the name of the area surrounding Baghdad, and here we can see that instead of having a suggested level to explore and take on the area, we will have a suggested rank. As in a suggested rank within the Hidden Ones Brotherhood, as you might remember that Basim will increase his rank in the Brotherhood as he progresses in his story. The game will also include spearmen that will try to poke through haystacks as it was in past games, and guards that can call for reinforcements again as it was the case in previous games. Another element that I was really hoping to see as soon as possible was social stealth in-game and the dev diary delivered on that. Hiding among standing groups of people or systemic blending will finally be back properly, allowing us to be undetected in crowded areas, and by the way, we can see more icons in the compass here, showing what seems to be a bag and a needle, possibly to represent a general store and a tailor to buy outfits, and also the prompt for pickpocketing here, but back to social stealth, we will also get the chance, by consuming specific tokens, to bribe small factions into walking towards specific directions so that we can infiltrate a guarded area as we walk amidst them. Here we can also see a description for another enemy archetype, the armored enemies, who will have their torso protected by armor, meaning that they can't be attacked face on with melee or ranged weapons, and thus Basim will have to try and get behind these enemies to deal damage to them. The chapter dedicated to the assassination starts with a new concept art showcasing an assassination from a well, another type of hiding spot that is being brought back from the classic Assassin's Creed games. As Sarah Beaulieu discusses the Hidden One's missions of killing the members of the Order of the Ancients, we see a new concept indeed focused on that and a model of one of the masks that are going to be worn by our antagonists, before we get to see another concept of a Hidden One's bureau as Stéphane Boudon mentions that the bureaus will act as gameplay hubs from which players will start side contracts with various objectives like rescue missions and assassinations. Beaulieu moves on to announce 
announced the new Investigation Board, which we previously knew as Dynamic Quest Board and replaces the quest log from the recent RPG games. In essence, it's going to be a menu where players will find clues about their targets, investigate their identity, track their movements and so on. Another element that is part of the Assassination Spiller are the Black Box missions, where players will be able to choose their own path to perform a main assassination, and as the devs discuss them in the dev diary, we find a new concept of Roshan and Basim, with him wearing a dyed version of his initiate outfit in the same color of the guards that are the most close to his target, and Roshan pointing him at the map featuring the path that his target's convoy is going to take throughout Baghdad. And finally, the kicker of the video is presented by our director Jean-Luc Salah, and that is the option to toggle a filter that allows to play the game in a desaturated blue to grey color palette, as it was the case for a good chunk of the original Assassin's Creed game. So these are more or less all the news that emerged from the first of the three Assassin's Creed Mirage Depth Diaries, with the second episode coming up soon, which is going to be titled Basim, the Master Assassin, and it's going to feature the animation of a fight with Roshan during his training, but while we wait for that, we have even more Assassin's Creed Mirage news to share coming from our latest news video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in our next video.